yeah, I'd be honored. I'm an addict named Adam. And tonight I've asked someone dear to me that I love, Jeff L. from Virginia Beach. Come on here and share. I've got to know Jeff now. Man, it's going to be 18 months. And I've seen a lot of growth and a lot of change. Um, he's doing the next right thing for the next right reason. I'm grateful to have him in my life. And so without further ado, here is Jeff L. Hey, thank you, Adam. I'm an addict. And my name is Jeff. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> hey, Ruben. Thank you. It's, it's an honor to be speaking tonight. And uh, it's a miracle to speak today. Now, I will say... My clean day is May 15th, 2023, which would mean today I have been clean for 450 days. And that's a miracle. Adam has been my sponsor for about that same amount of time, which, which is a miracle that our higher power puts into each other's lives. Adam is the perfect sponsor for me. Please, you know, congrats, Adam. Six years is a long time, brother. 450 days. Of uh, 24 hours is a long time. So, no matter where you are, miracles happen in this program. And for an addict like myself, one day without using drugs really, really is a miracle. And um, Adam wants me to tell my story this evening. So, I'm going to do my best to do that. I hate public speaking. Prior to coming to this fellowship and beginning to recover from the disease of addiction. I think I think I had like two presentations in college that I could not get out of. But in high school, middle school, elementary school, I always found a way to not present. But through this process of going sharing uh in a meeting like this at night meetings. Um I still have the tears. I still have anxiety about speaking, but it's not crippling. I don't try to find my way around it. And here I am. So I am uh, 31 years old, grew up with a pretty good childhood. <clears throat> Military family, both my parents were in the Navy. Grew up in Oregon, Washington, and then here in Virginia Beach is where I graduated high school and where I stayed. I know for for me that the disease of addiction was present long before the first time I used the drug. I think I used for the first time on the age of 14 and 15. Uh, like I said, I had a pretty good childhood. It wasn't perfect. But I had two parents that loved me the best they could. And they were both in the military. So, you know, moving around was, you know, I pitied myself, you know, all my life because we had to move and I had to leave my friends. And, you know, my parents got divorced. And all these things about my childhood was terrible before I started recovering from this disease. Started working a program, but but really, I, mean, I had a great childhood, and I started using as kind of I guess a way to fit in. You know, I always felt apart from not a part of, um, and then started hanging out with people that you wanted to be like them. So really from the beginning though, I didn't like it. What's that? What's, I tend to use specific drugs, not in excess, but when I share, is that okay? <laughs> All right. Let's uh, go, let's go go with the detail. Yeah. Started smoking when I was young. And drinking, and I, I didn't like the way it made me feel at first. I didn't like feeling like I was out of control, and but I kept doing it to fit in. Kept doing it, doing it until I started liking it. And obviously, as the disease progressed, I started to need it. <laughs> I graduated high school shortly after I had a child. Which, you know, skipping around here, but I used a lot in high school and I was going to go to the military straight out of high school. Had some illnesses that disqualified me 
and so I, I had no backup. I graduated, but barely. And so I started working for a landscaping company uh, because that was a job I could work at and use every day with my coworkers. And I liked that. Had a child. I, I went to community college, kind of changed my major multiple times, couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. Was going to school for horticulture for a while. And after my son was born, I went to nursing school. And, and that was really the first, one of the first things that I felt like I was really passionate about. And, and it started to build my confidence as I started finding success in nursing school. When I started in nursing school, I started working as a care partner at a hospital like a CNA, and like I mentioned, I had some illnesses that disqualified me from the military. I had hereditary pancreatitis. It really started for me at like the age of 17 after a couple of years of drinking alcohol and had some really bad flare-ups of pancreatitis, which involved pain, nausea, and vomiting. was evaluated and like tested had genetic testing and was told, like, if you have this, the best thing you can do is not drink alcohol, not smoke cigarettes, eat a low-fat diet. And I didn't want to do any of those things. You know, I didn't want to stop doing any of those things. So for the next 10 years, I continued to do those things. I graduated nursing school and started working as a registered nurse. And Prior to nursing school, I, I was doing all sorts of drugs, whatever I could get my hands on. Once I started nursing school, I, I started like the old substitute one for another. I stopped using the harder stuff and, and limited myself to drinking alcohol because of the social acceptability. <clears throat> that would lead to, you know, more health problems for me. And Along with pancreatitis, a prescription of pain medication, which, like it says in our book, thought I was all right because I could stop for a while. You know, like I would get a prescription, I would abuse it, and then I would be good until the next time I had a flare up of pancreatitis. The further that went on, the the more I got prescriptions, the more I started getting sick more and more. And after a few years of being a nurse, I had to, I got, I was really sick. I had to get my pancreas removed. So the major surgery, I was prescribed more and more and thought it stopped less and less, like it says in our literature. <clears throat> I had the surgery, it was successful. It, it took away a lot of, you know, I haven't had pain since 2021 when I had my surgery. I'm fully diabetic, but with today's technology, like that's very well managed. I was on disability for about 10 or 11 months for the surgery. And when I went back to work, you know, so I had the surgery and there was like a five month period that I was no longer prescribed pain medication. During that time, I mean, the use of other things went up. My body no longer tolerates alcohol after the surgery. And physical reaction is automatic allergy, if you will, and so you sell the things. Suicide, thoughts of suicide, part of my story, that's, you know, I couldn't live with or without drugs for a while. Without the drugs, you know, I just, I didn't think about my problems before the drugs ran out. I went back to work and began healing psychotic work was doing things that morally I like never thought I would do um, and my relationship with my family became more and more strained with my wife and the ex-wife and my son you know it was either I was elated or I was extremely depressed if the drugs were there I was elated if, if not you know, I was extremely depressed and so I started working more and more. I mean, for a good six months, I was working 28 
to 30, 12 hour shift in a lot. I've had, there were a couple months that I worked every single day. But that was where I was getting my drugs in. But that was what was keeping me alive at the time. By the grace of God, you know, I got caught before I overdosed. Um, the horror card thing helped me, you know, find recovery. And I was so tired at that point. I was ready. I really was ready for recovery. My life was so unmanageable. I knew I was powerless. Like I did what I was using, but as soon as the drugs were gone, I knew I was. And then as soon as I knew, you know, I couldn't get the drugs anymore, I, w- I was ready. So that's, you know, a couple months after that, I met Adam, went to treatment. I was going to meeting. But I had been to a meeting in nursing school and I identified with the part of my curriculum. I identified with the readings, but I just, like I said, I thought I was okay because I was able to stop for a while, but not realizing that I couldn't stay stopped, that was a problem. So since, you know, since I came into recovery, life has been, you know, it really has been beautiful. Yeah, I really have been blessed. I went to an amazing treatment program for 60 days and I, I, it was a, it was a program that was very revolved around 12 cent fellowships. And, and so I was involved with that while I was out of the state there. And then when I came back, I pretty dove into the Zoom platform for sure. You know, I has that to be my sponsor. Started working with stamps. Uh, I, I did a 90 and 90. I, I tried to do it, I didn't know the, I don't think I, I think I missed a day or two. I started to serve. I took a service position on a Zoom platform, and I think I just came up on a year that I've been doing service on the Zoom platform, and at points in the last year and some change, I kind of drifted away from the fellows, yeah. I drifted all the way away, but like went from five meetings a week to two or three, or you know, there were at least a couple weeks that the only meeting I went to was that service commitment I had, and you know, went a week or two at a time without talking to Adam. And during those periods of time, I mean, I was I was on thin ice. I mean, the closer I have to this fellowship, the more meetings I go to, the more addicts I talk to, like. I feel a lot better. Where are we at? 18 minutes? You know, I've worked one step by one, two, three were like real, they really were powerful for me. Step one, like that's what I really believed in. It. Like, I knew I was powerless. I knew I was powerless. I probably thought that I could fix it myself, but through working step two, like, I came to believe that I needed power greater than myself. Before recovery, I was spiritually void and believed in a higher power. Um, but through step two, like, I really did, I do believe in a higher power. I faith that I'm being restored to sanity as long as I continue to recover and to work this program. And for free, I mean, surrendering, <laughs> making a commitment to Trust my higher power and will and, and not try to take mine back. Sometimes that's hard. After, you know, easy does it a lot. I have to remind myself that I'm right where I need to be right now. Like, I, I like to think I'm not quite where, I, you know, not quite where I want to be. And maybe I'm not where I want to be all the time, but I'm anywhere I need to be. I like the good things that happen to me, the neutral things, the bad things. Um, I, I'm grateful for the all. Like, honestly, I didn't, I do just want to add, I didn't work for, as a nurse for over, a, yeah, over a year. I just started working as a nurse again last week. Adam got me, helped me get a job at preschool, which I didn't go back to. I didn't start working there for a few months. Like the first few months, I really, I moved her, 
DoorDash to make money. And I came to Hamburg, like I was in a lot of meetings. I was working steps. I was meditating. I was praying. I was trying to develop these routines that I need to recover. And I was able to go back to work as a nurse since September of last year. But like, I accepted the possibility that I might never work as a nurse again. And that was my identity coming into recovery. Like I was a nurse, I was a dad, and I didn't even touch on all the karma blessings that have come out of this process in my parenting and my relationship with my son. But, you know, it's just, it's, it's been a journey and I'm very grateful for it. How do I want to close here? You know, this is this is a, a, a one day at a time process for me and and today I didn't use drugs. You know, I went to a meeting, I prayed. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Thank you for allowing me to share. Love you all. Great. Thank you. Sure. Sure.